I propose you another secure memory hands-on. This time, we will activate or lock the secure memory thanks to the bootloader services. So, this is, I would say, the right way to do it in a secure way. I hope you have understood this from the theory part before. So, we will create a relocated standalone tangling led binary that we will put in a location and it will be our unsecure binary. Then we will create the main binary, which is located in the secure memory, that will close the secure memory and load the toggling led binary that is in the non-secure part, thanks to system bootloader services. The different step to achieve this, first we need to have a binary with blanking led with vector table relocation. So it's important because when you close the secure mem, the base of the flash is not uh, accessible anymore. So if you forget to relocate the vector table of your binary, it won't work. Uh, I choose this address for the non-secure part. Then we will modify or we will implement the call of uh, the RSS services. So here I put you the information because it's a little bit tricky from my point of view and not well documented today. So for the G0071, I found this information mainly in the SBSFU package you can find on our site. It should be available in the reference manual also. So I will just give you some explanation at this point. In fact, to call these services, you need to have in the register zero, the vector table of these services. And how to find this? We've got the address of these services and it will be a pointer that is, or the address that is located at this address plus four. Then in this register one, we should have the magic number, this one. And then in the register two, the application where we would like to jump uh, just after closing the memory. So how I do this, I create uh, a tip of a pointer function with three arguments. Then it was my jump to application, it's what I will call. Then I will compute my jump address. And my jump address, as I said before, is just the address pointed by this address plus four. So I take the Belsky key plus four, I take the content and I've got my jump address. Then I initialize my uh, pointer of function to this address. I jump it with the three arguments to ensure that in L0 I've got the jump address the magic number in air one and the application in air two. Not easy, but once you have done it, you will see it works. The step after will be to configure the sex size as before. And then you can check the status after pushing the button. If I well remember, I don't know if I push a button here, but okay, it's not so important. I think you've got the step in mind now. So let's switch to Kubernetes. So for the first step, we will create uh, this lead blinking application that will be relocated at the end of the flash. So it will be put at the end of the flash and it will be considered as our unsecure uh, application firmware. Okay, let's start a new project. New Team32 project and the board selectors, G0, 7G1, 0 okay. Then lead blinking finish. Uh, this time I won't initialize uh, all the peripheral because I just need the lead and I've got really a tiny space, a key to put uh, my binary. So not this time, thank you. I need to configure my lead pin, which is P. Five, so this could be fine in the documentation of the Nucleo, and we put this one as GPIO output. Nice, let's save. We generate the code. Then let's write the toggling of the lead now. So my main, we just initialize GPIO in the while one. I will just toggle the lead. So it's on the port A and the pin 5. Then we will add a HL delay. And 
it's nearly down. What we should not forget, we need to relocate our vector table at the beginning of this code. If we don't do such kind of thing, when we will have an interrupt, it will jump to the base of the flash to execute the vector table, which was not what we want to do. So here, we need to modify the SBC vector. Okay. And we will put this one at the address where we want to put our binary. Uh, sorry. Eight zero. Oh. Eight zero one. E. Uh, let me count. Yes. Okay. Here we have done the relocation of the vector table. That way we assure that our vector table will be in our unsecure part. Okay, let me double check. No, I've missed one zero. One, two, three. Okay, it's not it's eight, maybe. Yes. Better that way, I think. <laughs> Sorry about this. So we prepare our binary. We need now to relocate it. So for this, we will modify the location in the linker script. Um, let's just say that this flash for it, it started at this location. Okay. Now the size is only 8K. So I think everything is in line. Let's build this. I see an error. Oh, sorry. SCB, not SBC. Okay. So compilation is okay. So just to remind you for the relocation of the vector table, you need to do this at the really beginning before any, any uh, interrupt. Then here we just modify the origin of the flash in the linker script. We can test this application. Download is okay, so now it's flash on our target. If I resume and show you the result, LED is blinking. Okay, if I reset the board, obviously it won't start again this program because it's located at the end of the flash and the nuclear will boot at the beginning of the flash. So it was just to show you. Uh, we could check just the interruption where we are located when we've got an interrupt, for example. So if I go in the interrupt, mm, let's put a breakpoint in the timer, the cystic one. When we stop, we can check the PC and here we are in the cystic, cystic handler and we are really in the unsecure part. So everything is fine. I propose we just close and terminate and remove this one. So this was the first step of uh, this hands on. We've got the LED blinking, we already flash it. So now we'll create a second project where we will call this one thanks to bootloaders uh, services, unlock the secure mem at the same time. So I close this one for the moment. Project the close, close project. So create a new project. Okay. New. And 32. The flash selector, the board, the G0, 71, secure, and then this boot. Finish. Um, we can initialize by default. And this time what I want to do is to have the push button. The idea is that when I push on the button that I jump to the LED blinking area, okay? So it was PT13, which is already configured for the wake up by default, but we can change this and say it's a GPIO input. Okay, 
dazu. So remember, just to, to be fully clean, here we will change the linker file because we keep the last 8K for, I would say, uh, the, secure, uh, the unsecure parts. So let's keep with 120K. And now let's code it what we want to do. So this could be a little bit tricky and it's not well documented today, frankly speaking. It's why I decided to do it as hands-on. I found information in reference manual and cross-check with uh, the SBSFU packages where you can find some example of such kind of code. So first, I will just copy and paste source defined value. And I will explain it then. When we want to jump to the services, we've got the address where is the services, okay? Then we've got a magic number that we will need to pass, and also we will need to pass the address where we want to jump in finally. So this is really, I will say, the happy eye. And the way it was expected by these services is to have in the register zero, you should have the services vector table address. And this one could be found by this address plus four, it's pointing to the address of the vector table, okay? So I will show you how to compute this and these parameters. So in the register one, we need the magic number, and the register two, you need the application address when you want to jump to. So for us, it was the location of our lane blinking and secure. So I try to find a syntax in C. You can code this in assembly code, but okay, C is maybe more easier. So first we will define a pointer on a function. So we do a type def. And then it was a function. And I want to, to have a type of pointer on function. Okay. This function will have three arguments, the three we've got here for the S0 one. So it was 32 bit value, A. and C. Okay, and now I will use this type def I've done, pointer function, and I will call jump to application. So I'm declaring this pointer on function, okay? Then I will need to compute this famous uh, vector table address. So here I will call it jump address. In fact, it's an entry point of uh, this admin or these services. Okay, so now we will compute just the jump address. The jump address will be this first argument. Then we will put the magic numbers and the application address. The jump address will be equal to what? It will be this address plus four, and we are looking what is the value in pointed by this address also. Uh, I hope it's clear, or when I will write it, you will better understand. So in my main loop, we are in the secure world. What I will do, I will test if we push a button. That way I can trigger, I will say, the jump outside the secure main. GPIU. So we read the pin. It was on pin C. It was on the pin 13. So if this one equal to zero, that means it has been pressed. And now I will start it to play with my different value. So my jump address equal to what? So here yeah, I will need to cast because in fact it was the PL exit sticky, okay? Plus four, as I say I want, and I want the content of this.
Okay? This is exactly what I would like. The problem will be some cast. So let's post some additional cast to ensure we don't have any issue. Set it to type and it's a pointer. Okay, so now we can just initialize the function where we want to jump in. So we jump to application. And in fact, so this is a pointer of function type, so I need also to cast the value and it will be jumped to this address. I hope for you it's clear. And now I will call this function because it's a pointer of function, but just go that way. And I will put the different arguments. So first, in the A0, I want the vector table address or the entry point of the services. Then I would like my magic number. Then my application address. And that's it. It seems to be okay. So let's build this. Okay, I made some error. Um, let me check. Okay, and okay, sorry for the miss of this. Underscore type. So compilation is okay. Now let's try to experiment it. So we will flash it. So we remember here we will activate, but frankly speaking, we haven't activated the secure memory. So it should not work. But let's flash it at least. Debug. Okay, nothing specific here. So I launch. If I press the button, I'm stop. Then I will call an application somewhere and in fact, my LED is blinking. The problem is that the memory is not locked. I mean, I can still put a breakpoint here. And OK, I'm stuck in the other application, but uh, I would say I can access it. We can just check it with QProgrammer. If I take QProgrammer, um, first I will disconnect, sorry. So I terminate and remove. If I take cube programmer now, if I connect in on plug, so I can see my secure memory. Oh, no, my unsecure path, sorry. But if I go to this location, I can also read the code. So my secure memory haven't, have not been, I would say, removed. The next step is to modify the option byte. Okay. So here yeah, I will put two. C. So now I really declare that the sex size is this one. And when I close it, I can't see anymore all the first part of the memory. Let's apply it. It was programmed successfully. First, let's say functional. So I just reset. If I push a button, my LED is blinking. So I will really jump in, uh, I would say, my unsecure part. And now let's try to access the first part of the memory. So here, if I read the memory again, it's not possible, OK? And if I just check here, I still can see, I would say, the unsecure part of my memory. So this is a really example how to use this functionality in a secure way, in the meaning that you can't interrupt when you call these services, you can't break in. 
So really interesting if you added uh, the functionality or if you deactivate the debugging link or if you are using the boot lock, remember this, with really a lot of careful because you can break your device, but it's a really way to secure this first part of the secure e execution for a secure boot.